Hey, this is James Gall with Insight, where we are looking at the days in which we live. This is Insight with James W. Gall for the days in which we live. And this is my co-host, my youngest daughter, Rachel Renee Tucker, and she will introduce herself and the theme verse for our weekly broadcast. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you with us. And this is our third, broad, fourth? I think it's our fourth broadcast doing this. Um, like James said, I am his youngest daughter. He's my dad. And I have two little girls, Ruby and Ember, and a wonderful husband, McKendry. Um, so we're very excited to be doing Insight with you guys. Our theme verse for this show comes from Daniel 12, 3, which says, those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead the many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. It's so Amen. good. So we actually have a special uh, that we just want to show you at the beginning, because these are days in which we live that we need prayer. So I think most of you who, who know me know that I've given my life to prayer and have written a lot of resources. So we have a special um, prayer bundle and we just wanna show you one of them that is available. And so uh, I believe that what we're gonna present to you today is the powerful prophetic intercession curriculum kit that is the book called praying with god's heart the study guide that goes with it and then either you get cds dvds and when you do this on online at our at the james gall or god encounters the resource center you could also get it in an mp3 or an mp4 whatever you want this is normally 215 dollars but we have a 62% sale on our prayer bundles. And so it's for $79. So anyway, we want you to know that there are some great resources for you to help us in the days in which we live. What do you think about that, Rachel? So good. We need all the resources we can get. Yeah. <laughs> So what did we, what have we uh, shared on in case someone, this is the first time that they have watched. So this is a sense today is part two. What did we do last week? Do you remember? Yeah, we talked about, <laughs> put me on the spot. <laughs> I know I just did. That's not in the notes, is it? Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm seeing if she really knows and watches and listens. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I do listen. I just multitask a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. We talked about the history throughout uh, our society as a, as a world of plagues that we've gone through and, and how it's affected society. And what, what does God say about that? Yeah, so we called it plagues prophecy, and prayer. But we did go through, and I listed about 10 different pandemics that had gone on throughout the ages to actually help give some perspective, some insight, that even though this is extraordinarily intense, it's not near as intense as what many civilizations, points and times in histories, and even one of them was just uh, like a hundred years ago that this nation went through. But anyway, so today is part two. And what are we calling part two today, Rachel? Today, our theme is Passover, plagues and God's promises. Oh, great. So we continue, but la you see last week it was plagues, prophecy and prayer. And we put something else as the priority and it is passover plagues and god's promises yeah so 
let me just kind of jump into it. I have a couple of theme verses for insights for today. One of them comes from Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. So I'm giving you one Old Testament and one New Testament. Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take for yourselves lambs according to your families and slay the, now listen to the word, pass over lamb. Now there's many verses that we could talk about and look at, but I just need to do a thumbnail sketch. By the way, do you know what today is? See, the Hebrew Jewish calendar, it starts when the sun sets. So Passover literally like started at like 6 p.m. last night. So today is Passover. And this Passover is the first, get this, how historic this, this Passover is. This Passover is the first Passover since the original first Passover. This is the only second Passover in all history that the Jewish people are quarantined in their homes, literally, during Passover. Are you kidding me? No, it's only the second time in all history. Because before, it was about a plague. Wow. And they were quarantined, and they had to do what? Put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of the house. And then death, plague, passed over. That's that, where we get passed that not, Like, that's really a big deal, isn't it? That's why I'm trying to help bring insight, folks. Yeah, that's a big deal. It's huge. Now, on some of my social media places, on the God Encounters one, I have like posted videos and different things to help you have some tools to look at about this. So get this, that last night into today is only the second time in all, I'm not talking about a thousand years, it's like, over 2,000, it's like over, like for 3,000 years, let's say. Did you hear this? That's unreal. Yeah, but see, that's just it. See, if Rachel doesn't know this, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to be. No. But, but it, see, and, and it's she's just real, also like... somewhat aware, and if she's not, you know what? Almost hardly anybody's really aware of the his time of history we are in. It is this Passover is only the second one in, it's I'm saying 3,000 years, but in all history that the Jewish people in Israel, and let's say Jerusalem, are actually quarantined in their house because of a plague. So, my first verse is from Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. And I got off already into that because of what this says. It says, then Moses called all the elders of Israel to do what? Go and take for yourselves lambs according to your families and slay the Passover lamb. And then they would put, they had to put that, that original, they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of the house, okay? and the plague would pass over. Hey, okay, come on, pass over plagues and God's promise. Now you're already getting the insight for today. Folks, this is Chuck Pierce, myself, and multiple other Charlie Champ, multiple prophetic voices have been saying, this is the most historic Passover in any time of recent history. And then, now that was prophetic. Then I did some research and I found out, oh my goodness, consider this. It's only the second time for Passover. That means it's only the first time under a new covenant that the Passover is being celebrated in Israel in quarantine, quarantine, amazing. Now, one more verse from the New Testament. 
Now, we could do a whole Bible study, but that's not our purpose for this particular uh, time together. Is then I'm giving us one New Testament verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I love that. Okay, the prophetic dimension, you know, 5 is grace and 7 is completion. And so let's look at a 5 7. It says, clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as, in fact, unleavened bread. For Christ, our Passover, has already been sacrificed. So I want to give us the old, which becomes the, the prototype, and then the new is the reality, the fulfillment. So, this is one of the most historic Passovers in all history right now. And not only is this Passover plagues and God's promises, I have been declaring along with my friend Cindy Jacobs and along with Chuck Pierce and, and Bishop Hammond and many others, that this would be a time frame where things would shift. It would be the tipping point for the current day plague of the coronavirus. So that's why we're talking about Passover, the plagues, and God's promises. Because right now, on April 8th into April 9th, eight, a number of new beginning, and nine, a number of fullness. We are in a Passover, even with this current global plague. And we are entering into a 50-day period. I was doing a, um, one of these uh, calls with uh, Cindy Jacobs and my friend Aaron Winter in uh, Portland, Oregon, and I saw the number 50 written out in front of me, and I went, what is this? And I peered into it, and of course I know 50 is Jubilee, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I might have shared this last week, that we were going to enter into 50 days where there would be the reset of the nations would happen. Mm -hmm. And so we are going into now the Passover, and we're going into a 50-day reset, and it will be a global economic reset. And by the time Pentecost comes, which is Sunday, May 31st, that's 50 days, we will have like a coming out party in the United States, we're going to have a coming out in the church where I tell you the fire of God is going to fall like a neo, a new Pentecost. I tell you churches are going to be filled. I tell you a move of God is going to be kicked into motion. And Jesus, get this, told his, I'm so excited about all of this. It's like, it, I am so, on, bring it. <laughs> I, 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 I don't remember a season where I feel so electrified in God for, since the visitations that we had for those nine weeks, all the way back in 1991. And there's, I know that I've had other seasons that I, let me just say, I am like so energized and it's just like and and it's like i keep having more encounters with the lord now and i've always had them but they're they're happening more consistent and more intense so anyway so christ our passover has already been sacrificed first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 so now Let's look at it just for a little bit more, and then we'll get into some revelation. And hey, Rachel, we're going to do some Q&A and things like that. So I'm going to do a pause. Why don't you tell the folks how this is going to operate today? Well, we're not live today, so oh, right. I don't know if we should do Q&A. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Well, let's do a ministry time instead. Yeah, let's. we'll have a time of ministry, but... 
um, we will do a watch party on here. And so please drop in the comments where you guys are from, what nation, city, state, province. Last time we had people from all over the entire world join in on our broadcast from Trinidad to Chile. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember everything because it, it, every single week it's pretty crazy to see all the different nations that are represented on every single one of these calls from Singapore and uh, Nigeria. Yeah, there, there were. Africa. Yes, it's yeah. India, Brazil. It's, I mean, it's amazing. It's incredible. So please let us know where you guys are from. We want yeah. to connect with you. We want to um, see, like, minister to where you guys are at. We even had Egypt. I know we've had several people no. message in. What was that word you had about yeah. Egypt? So maybe that's something we can circle back around to another time or. No whatever, but we love hearing where you guys are from. And yeah, we'll do a time of ministry and hopefully these technical difficulties won't keep us in the way, uh, won't get in the way in the future for us to do live so that we can do a live Q and A with you all. Yep. Okay. So we'll catch that at another time, but there can be some interaction though with the people uh, with watch parties or however all of this technology works. Okay, social media. I love it. I don't understand it. Okay. Okay. Well, it's constantly um, changing. I know. And it changed today. And that's part of the problem. Yep, but you're doing a great job. Yeah, well, hey, so are you. So thank you. So and you are doing a great job today. Guess what? Every day in Jesus is good news day. I am so tired of bad news prophets. Okay. I am so over it. I want to see a new breed of good news, new covenant prophets, and how about disciples and believers? We have the good news. Today, we are celebrating Passover. Mm -hmm. And if you just now to bring us back into the kind of configuration of where we have been, this is only the second time in all history, not in the last 100 years, all recorded history, that the Jewish people in Israel are celebrating Passover the way the first one was, where they are locked down in quarantine in a time of a plague. But I tell you, this Passover is also going to go down in history books. And it will go down in history books, folks, that this coronavirus came at such a time as this. And the body of Messiah rose up with global worship, prayer, praise, and intercession, Passover, plagues, and God's praying people, and God's promises, and God's praying people. And it makes a difference because I am declaring this thing has reached its zenith and it is now on its way downhill. But we're not going downhill. We're going up. We go, we go, I uh, we go up to the north side. <laughs> uh, let's see, how's that go? Uh, the Jeffersons. Oh, you don't know that song? I don't know this song. Oh. I don't think oh. so. Maybe if I heard the original. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's not to the, it's to the west side, to the east side. The, I got a piece of the sky. Okay, anyway. Hey, Rachel and I, it was so frustrating today that when we started interacting, we just said, we think we should make faces today. Yeah, you know, when you experience technical difficulties and your plans don't work out like you wanted to, you just got to laugh sometimes. Yeah, so why don't we just kind of like look at your, look at us and laugh, okay? <laughs> oh, man. You're a hoot, but you're a hoot. How's that? You know, one of my favorite things about you, Dad, is that you are hysterical. Uh, sometimes. Yeah, you're, you're. Yeah incredibly deep and yeah. in the same sentence you could make someone completely belly laugh it's the best combo i have you know it's that is a miracle because growing up 
I didn't even understand jokes. <laughs> and I would make myself laugh out of peer pressure to kind of feel accepted because I could not understand a joke. I couldn't tell a joke. And I never, I could even, I couldn't even tell one because I didn't remember them because I never understood them. And I would make myself laugh, ha, 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 you know, because I never understood a joke. Now, when I got less stiff and less religious and more secure in who I am and God and in just who I am, oh, yo, throw it down. Let's, I mean, I mean, it's like, you could do like a bloopers, like insight bloopers where we tell like funny stories. Oh, let's, hey, yeah. let's just do a whole session sometime of like insights. Oh, uh, 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 from growing up. Oh, <laughs> uh, how about the time you shanked me? Okay, let's move on to Passover and, and plagues and God's promise. <laughs> the shanking Passover you. <laughs> I'm turning red right now, but it's because the blood's on me. Yo. <laughs> okay, I think we better get back to by the way, we're having some good times. And I think that this is of the Lord because we yes. need to breathe. And it is so serious that there are times we just literally need to pause and breathe. Yes. And just be thankful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I just went to Whole Foods. I was just so glad to see somebody's face. I wanted to go hug that lady. I don't want to hug the, ca the cashier. Uh, I know. I think we need to have a hugging party all around the world. Uh, when this is done, we just have hugging parties. So you're like, come to my house. It's open. Everyone's going to get hugs. I don't know. Oh, I was just thinking about virtual hug party. Like we could do an insight when they, I know, I know we need, I know, believe me, I know. But how about we do one of the times when this is all passed over, like at Pentecost, and we're going to do, we're going to say, yo. Maybe is, you and I will be together for a video and we can give a physical oh, hug. And we'll be uh, like, look, real life hugs. Yeah, really? That'd be fun. Okay, so. I know that that was, anyways, I'm not going to apologize. Passover, plagues, and good news. This is the good news part, right? This is the There's good news part. There's always a choice to have joy. There's That's always right. a choice to be thankful. That's There's right. that passage, I'm sorry, I, I'm no, just going I love it. it. Passage in Philippians about rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. Isn't it interesting that it repeats rejoice, rejoice? Like, and again, I say rejoice. It's such a choice and it literally changes the atmosphere. Yes, it does. does if you it? have a decision, are you going to rejoice in this moment or are you going to complain? You can no. completely wake up every day and focus on the fact that, oh man, I lost another job. I, um... I, I like uh, I tried to like uh, fill out those forms for some of that two point two trillion dollars, and uh, I haven't heard anything yet. Exactly, and and I mean we're right there with like we're in the self employment world, mm -hmm. and there's a decision every day, it's whether it's between you and God, or you and your family, or you and your friends. Yep to create, to draw the boundary line and say, I'm going to choose to rejoice today. And I'm going right. to choose to be thankful for what God has given me. Uh, Even though it's uncertain, mm -hmm. we can rejoice. That's what faith does. Faith promotes a culture of gratitude. In fact, the way I learned it from my teaching meant apostolic teaching grandfather in the faith Derek Prince is that thanksgiving is the car load in the train that carries the payload of faith to its hmm. next place of direction so good thanksgiving gratitude is the vehicle it's the car 
that carries the payload of faith to its next place of assignment. So this all works together. So let's be in Passover yeah. and in a time of a plague. Let's be people of God's promise and let's be good news people. How's that? Absolutely. That makes it pretty simple, doesn't it? It really does. Let me go on ahead and just do quickly though, just a little bit more on the plagues, you know, in the Bible, because some people think that, see again, that I was just negative last week because I was giving you all of this historical data. But by the way, plagues are in the Bible. Have you considered at the time with Moses? There were 10 plagues that were used by God as judgment upon the enemies of God to release the people of God into their promise. Plagues, Passover, plagues, and God's promise. So, you know, you know this. You've seen Ten Commandments movie, right? If not, watch it. There was one. There was blood. The water was turned to blood. There were frogs. There was lice. Number four, there was flies. Oh my gosh, that'd be horrible. Number number five, <clears throat> number four is flies. Number five, it's called pestilence. Number six, boils. Okay, guys. Number seven on top of boils was hail. Number eight, locusts came. Number nine, deep darkness. The sun could not be seen. And then number 10 was the slaying of the firstborn son, the firstborn. And that's why they had to put the blood, which Jesus is our Passover lamb. And we are entering into the greatest Passover right now. This is Holy Week for the Christian calendar. We go into what's called Monday, Thursday. We go into Good Friday, and then we have two and a half days, so it's called three. The, on the third day, he rose from the dead. And so I don't get to have, you know, it's like, so this is my broadcast for Holy Week and Passover. So I want to already get from the Passover, from the cross, over to Resurrection Sunday. And I want to say Jesus is the resurrection and the life. That is our eternal good news that never changes. That's so good. It really is. So let me give you just a little bit more and then we'll, and I have some fresh revelation I want to get into today. So, these are principles about plagues that are in both the Old and the New Testament. I got to give you, uh, I want to give you these two verses and then we'll move on. The principles are in both the Old and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 28 to 31. So hold on, I'm going to read a few verses real quick. If there is a famine in the land, and if there is pestilence. Whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer or supplic whatever prayer or supplication is made by any man or by all your people Israel, <clears throat> each knowing his own affliction and his own pain, and spreading his hands towards his house, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, and forgive and render each according to all his ways, whose hearts you know, you alone know the hearts of the sons of men, that they may fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you have given to your fathers. So it's talking about praying in the time of the plague of the pestilence and that and even when it says and people are sick and it says 
God is going to hear you anywhere. A New Testament corresponding verse. Luke chapter 21, verse 11, where it reads, Jesus the Messiah spoke of the last days as birth pangs before his second coming, his return. These last days will be marked by unusual events, including plagues. In case you don't believe this is in the New Testament, I am now going to read you the words of Jesus. Luke 21, verse 11. And there will be great earthquakes, and in various places, plagues and famines. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Isaiah 60 says that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but a light will shine and even kings will come to the brightness of its shining. So the, these are those days from Passover of the plague into the promise of God. Hey, will you read that last part again of the verse about the light shining brightly? Oh, well, that I was just quoting out of memory. Oh, will you say that part again? Yeah, it's Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 3. And it talks about that darkness... I'm actually starting probably in Isaiah 60, maybe in about verse 2, okay? It says that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. So it's both societal and it says, and it's going to touch people. It mm -hmm. says darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But then it says, and a light shall shine. Come on. And so what is our theme verse, Rachel? Daniel 12, 3, what's it say? Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. And those and who lead the many to righteousness. Come on, are. don't you think that? Exactly. And Isaiah 60 go together, don't That's you think? That's why I wanted you to read it again. I was like, how perfect is that? Because that is what we are called to do. Yes. And the mirror images of the Lord wow. and and shine brightly in the wow. and everyone always says you know oh when, my it, when it feels dark when it gets darker when the world gets darker the light it shines brighter that's why you can see stars at night yeah like, okay so, so I, I just i just turned to it isaiah 60 verse 1 arise shine your for light your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 for behold Darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. Verse 3, nations in the plural. Come on. It's where we are, folks. We are transitioning into the beginning of the billion soul harvest. We're... I feel so much electric presence of God. We are entering into the transition and, and the joining of the generations of crossing over the Jordan of a Joshua chapter four of inheriting the prophetic promises of all of those who have gone before us. And Isaiah 60 verse three says, and nation, it doesn't just say one or one city. And nations, it says, will come to your light. Come on. Oh, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Isn't that outrageous? So good. These are the days that we are living in. Now, I want to I wanna tell them one of my new stories. Is that all right, Rachel? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So guys, if you follow me on like social media on Facebook or Instagram, I'm, I'm like stepping to the plate right now in a little bit different way. Okay. So 
I have a lot of encounters. I normally teach them, incorporate them, but I don't normally post them. Well, I feel like I need to be letting people know what God is really speaking to me in this hour. So two nights ago, I was having some problems with the sciatic nerve. And I felt like I, it was 10 o'clock at night and I needed to just get in my hot tub. So here's what I, I, I posted. This evening, in an effort to soothe the throbbing sciatic nerve pain, I felt compelled to rest in my hot tub. Whispers of clouds came floating by as I peered heavenward. As I paused in silence, I was thrilled to see the beauty of the full moon. The clouds actually were covering the moon and they parted and it was like a, a whole circle opened up. It was like an open heaven and I could see the full moon. And I, could, I was thrilled to see the beauty of the peakish type tone that is like very rare that was on the moon, around the moon. And his voice came to me and said, I will speak in unusual ways in the next eight days. I have been waiting for such a long time for my people to slow down in order to listen. I have many things to say. I have many things to say in these days concerning new ways, new beginnings, fresh alignments, new wineskins for the new wine. I want to share my heart on seed time and harvest and sowing in and sowing in tears and reaping with joy. Wow. Will you turn aside like Moses did? I am. And the way I got it was, it was like one of the, those names of God, I am. Mm -hmm. Will you turn aside? like Moses did, I am there waiting. Rock my world. Rock my world. I, God says, you want to know something that God's saying? I felt so in tune with the heart of God. I feel so in tune with God's heart right now. I have been waiting for such a long time for my people to slow down so they could listen to me. Because I have many things I want to share with you now. New days and new ways and new beginnings, new alignments, new wine skins for the new wine. I want to share my heart with you about seed time and harvest, about sowing. <laughs> oh gosh, sowing in tears and reaping with joy. I am speaking. But will you be like Moses and turn aside? I am waiting there. Now, what does that mean? Will you be like Moses and turn aside? That's about the burning bush. And he could have just bypassed it and went acknowledge it. Oh, look at that. There's, isn't that an interesting little sign? And frolicked on his way. He could have acknowledged it. He turned aside. And when Moses turned aside, that's when the bush spoke. When we pause and we actually turn, 
We have to turn. That's actually called repentance, by the way, a turning. We are in a season of an invitation of the greatest turning the society has had. I said it's an invitation. How will we fully respond? I don't know. I believe that there's a gentle, the rude, and the great awakening. No. This is one experience that I just had. I got another one I want to share with you. But Rachel, what do you think about what I just shared? What's it do to you? You know, it reminds me of one of the blessings of having our kids home all the time. Also, tours being canceled. My husband tours and he's home all the time. Yay! <laughs> it's awesome. So he's been taking um, Ruby, our three-year-old, on walks. And oh, cool. And honestly, McKendry is such a gifted teacher. He just naturally oh, teaches oh. and naturally shows her opens her eyes to the world around her and love watching their relationship yeah. and he took her on a walk the other day and was walking her through the neighborhood and if we did not have this moment to slow down uh -huh. i don't know if this would have happened that's and right well he might have been gone right exactly he started yeah. teaching ruby looking for birds oh and looking for bird nests and teaching her about the bird nest and what's in the bird nest, like how there's little babies in there, but you have to look for them. They're, you know, they're hidden up in the trees or they're hidden in little weird nooks. And so they spent a time walking around our neighborhood looking for bird nests. I didn't know that. Wow. And since then, they, it's been really sweet because we've been doing a lot of yard work and we'll see a bird nest. And Ruby, come look at this bird nest. What's up there? And it's, a, I love it because what you're sharing about it is, the, the turning. So it's, it's a shifting of your perspective. Ruby wouldn't have known to look for a bird nest unless McKendry directed her attention to see yeah. a bird nest, to and teach it, her what is there. It's a part of the Malachi prophecy in Malachi 3, that the hearts of the fathers will be turned mm -hmm. and that the hearts of the children's hearts will be turned. Folks, we just started having fun together and we're a daughter, a, a daughter and a father. And Rachel's now just told a story about her husband and their daughter, one of their daughters. And you know what? You can have this too. This is not something that's elitism. And you might say, oh, I never had a dad like you. I was never, I don't have a husband like what Rachel does. And I understand you might not, but God, we have good news. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And it isn't only that no one comes to the Father, but listen, you get to come to the Father and turn aside every day. Yes. You get to point out and go, and Jesus points, and he says, he's right there. Yeah. He's, he's literally pointing, and, and you have the like Moses seeing the burning bush, he yeah. could have just gone, oh, cool. Do, 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 do. That's like, what I mean. Going. He could have acknowledged it, but he, he stopped. Yeah. He had to, he turned aside. Mm -hmm. And that's what my word in the hot tub, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but that's it the is. thing is that God can speak to us wherever we are uh, in everyday life. Yeah. And here's where this word ends. I want to share my heart on seed time and harvest on sowing in tears and reaping with joy. Will you turn aside as Moses did? I am waiting there. We want to encourage you today on Passover. He is waiting there. And there's a special place. This is going to touch somebody so deep right now. There's a special place at the Father's table that's reserved only for you. There's a special chair at the Father's table that has a name card. It's got Margaret written on it. It's got Charles written on it. 
It's got Elise written on it. It has Annette written on it. It has got uh, Buenos written on it. it. It's got your name. Just speak your name right now. I know we want to say Jesus, but you know what? Just say, just say, say your name. God knows your name. And there is a place at his table. Even if you don't, even if you're not married, even if you come from a family of generational abuse, there is a place at the Father's table at Passover waiting there just for you. There really is. So some people right now, your heart is getting touched and you're weeping under the presence of God. And God, Jesus, has come to heal the brokenhearted and set at liberty those who are bruised. And I just, that's from Isaiah, and then it's Jesus quoting from Isaiah into in the Gospels. And so I just say to you, the holy hand of God is coming upon you, and God is going to heal some memories for some people give you redemptive interpretation. And, and it might be an activity that's called something like, where were you, Jesus? That God is going to show you that he's always right there, available, whether we see him or not. And lo, I am with you always even into the end of the age. So I feel some healing. There's somebody, I feel like it's a heart palpitation, and, and your heart is, it might be a word of arrhythmia, and it's not in sync right. But I feel the hand of the Lord coming upon you. There's literal, physical heart healings that are happening right now, along with emotional heart healings. And abuse from men because he really is our god is a, a good good father and so today on passover passover plagues and god's promises we are sharing good news with you that's so amen. good amen i also just felt like there might be some of you who see our interaction and want this yep. with your daughter or you want this with your father. And there's a, a place that you're longing for a healing in your relationship. And I will say we are always working on our relationship. This isn't something but, that is just, yeah. um, you know, it's perfect all the time. No, we like daily, not daily, but uh, sometimes. sometimes work through little issues. Oh, yeah. And um, well, like, how about this one, Rachel? Talking over each other. Yes, we were talking about that yesterday on the phone. How, okay, we both need to listen more and let each other finish each other's thoughts. But that aside, I just wanted to to encourage you who have that desire for healing in your relationships that God has that available for you. And I just speak peace to those relationships in Jesus name. And I speak hope into those situations right now. Anyone who actually just has a place where you, there is broken trust, there's broken relationship, there's broken, the bridges have been broken between you and your communication. I just speak hope into your situation, Lord, and we just ask that you would go before them and that you would give them tactics of how to build one stone at a time to rebuild that bridge of trust between them in Jesus' name. Amen. I, mean, sorry, I just wanted to go ahead and just do that really quickly. So we speak in the Passover season. It is a time traditionally, of family gatherings. Mm -hmm. But a lot, some of us are alone. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know you are never alone. Yeah. That God is always with you. 
And there is a special place at the Father's table waiting with your name on it right there. And I want to go to another. This happened last night. What I'm going to now, and I just posted it at two o'clock in the morning on my Instagram and Facebook. And so here, listen to this. This is was riveting encounter and seeing the Lord told me the night before in the next eight days, and I'm going to say in the next 30, and then I'm going to say the next 50, and the next, but he said, in the next eight days, I will be speaking in unusual ways. Mm -hmm. So it actually happened last night. Here it is. On the evening of Passover, I was taken on a journey. This just happened instantly. It was like, I wasn't trying to make anything happen. I was having like a dialogue like with Rachel right now with a son in the faith named Jonathan Stidham. And this evening on Passover, I was taken on a journey by the Holy Spirit into the realms of God's eternal dwelling. I entered into a creation room in our father's house. The atmosphere was charged with an electric presence of God, the creator. Brilliant ideas, dreams, witty inventions, stunning colors, divine intelligence. A word captured me. A word captured my attention. A word permeated my being. We are entering into a fresh creation season in the body of Christ. We are entering into a fresh creation season in the world. The journey was over as quickly as it began. And I am saturated with creative concepts, ideas, and brilliant thinking. I have left music. Is this what it is like to have the mind of Christ? We are truly passing over from one era in history into an entire new era. I proclaim this word is your word. I declare that we are passing over into in this time a creation room in the Father's house. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it before. I didn't try to make anything happen. I tell you, he is inviting us in. And I saw this last night. I saw, I went to the creation room. I didn't know such a thing existed. Creation room. Whether it is the we go up or it comes down, it's because we're supposed to pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Well, I was given a picture of a room in heaven, but we're to call it down on earth. It's a creation room. It was filled with brilliant ideas, witty inventions, dreams and visions and new beginnings and divine thought. And then as I came out of that room, I heard a word. We are entering into a fresh creation season in the body of Christ. We are entering into a fresh creation season in the world. Wow. There will be so many new entrepreneur concepts and business, micro businesses and songs. New songs will be written in this period of time. Poetry will be written. Uh, concepts will be given. Uh, ideas about technology will be, uh, be, be, be released. I tell you, this is from a Passover of the plague into God's promises of a praying people of calling forth the generational blessings. Wow. Okay. So what do you think of the, those two uh, encounters I've just had the last few days? Um, I want to claim them for myself. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think. Well, why, why don't you pray into that now? Okay, let's let's do it. Let's turn the... Hey, folks, did you know that that is what we're to do with every prophetic word? You pray the word. It's one of the reasons why we don't see as many words actually come to pass. Is because we are to pray the word back to God. We have to receive a word, declare a word. We must pray a word, and then there is a point that we must take action. So, mm -hmm. Rachel, why don't you just start to pray, and, and we'll see where we land. Yeah. Well, Lord, we thank you for this creation room that you have for us. Mm -hmm. We thank you for this time of Passover and that your blood has covered us. You've gone before us, mm -hmm. Lord. And I just personally, for me and my family, and you as a listeners, you guys claim this. You mm -hmm. enter into prayer and you do what, what I'm doing. Like, Lord, we step in mm -hmm. and we say yes and amen. We claim that word. I'm going to reach up, claim it for me and my family. Lord, those inventions, those marketing ideas, the, yes. The, yes. the songs, the... The innovations, the just outside the box, Lord, we press into you and we receive divine uh, revelation from you that is not of this world, God. And we ask that you would give us the ability to retain it and to continue to claim it and walk in obedience to the words you've spoken to us each and every day. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And so, Father, we bless the people. Yes, Lord. And I just model for you an encounter, and then the first way to respond to the encounter mm -hmm. is turn to the Lord of the encounter. Yeah. Offer up thanksgiving. Yes, thank you. Lord. Even if you don't understand what just happened. And then you pray the promise. So right now, Father, we turn aside on Passover, and we see Jesus. We see the Messiah. We see the Lamb of God. And Father, hallowed would be your name. I take the encounter the other night when the clouds parted and the full bright moon lit up the night. And you spoke, I will be speaking in unusual ways for the next eight days. I bless you with the voice of the Lord. Yes, Lord. I bless you with God encounters. Yes, I bless you. We receive the word. We turn towards the God of the word. And now we say, we believe your word. And we say, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. And now we decree, we shall hear what the Lord our God shall speak, because he is speaking not only peace, he is speaking adventures yeah. to his people. Now, we take the second that was last night, the creation room. So, Father, we receive that in the Father's house, there are many dwelling places. There's many rooms, John chapter 14, verse 1. And so we declare that, we are the temple of the living God, so there's many rooms. We are asking if there is a room that we've never opened up, if there is a room in our mind, a room in our heart, a room in our temple that we have need to clean out, well, help us clean it out. If there's a room that the door is shut because we're afraid to go in there, we overcome fear by faith and by a choice, and we turn it, and we open up. Oh, you mean you were waiting in that room the whole time? Yeah. Yes. That's part of what's happening right now for someone. Mm -hmm. You come to a room and you've been afraid to go through the door mm -hmm. because you thought there was another loss mm -hmm. that was behind the door. But no, God is on the other side of the door. So don't fear calamity, mm -hmm. but rather believe that there's new creation rooms. 
for you. So good. In Jesus' name, I decree we, you, are in a new creative creation season for such a time as this. Well, amen. So, wow. So, Rachel, could you uh, show us that uh, prayer slide again, maybe? Yes, let me see if I can put that up here again. So we, uh, if we're able to show that again, I, I, you know, do different specials, you know, with the ministry. And right now I have all four of my prayer bundles uh, on a special. And again, it's the book, the study guide, the DVD, CDs, MP3 or MP4. So you just go to jamesgall.com. And the one that we are featured early on, and then there we go. It is my prophetic intercession. Some of you maybe know the second book I ever wrote was called Kneeling on the Promises. Well, then it later became the prophetic intercessor that I was asked by the publishing company to now bring it today's version. And I keep growing and learning. So now I understand what prophetic intercession really is about. It's about praying with God's heart. It's not just praying to God, it's learning to pray with God. So I wanted to make this a special right now, and it's only you know for that price of $79 right now, and you could go to jamesgall.com and you can get that, okay? So anything else, Rachel? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that if this has blessed you guys, um, if James's ministry has blessed you, which I actually work for my dad. So I'm a part of God Encounters Ministries, part of James Gold Ministries. But if this has blessed you, we um, want to make this available to you. Here is ways to give to God Encounters Ministries. And of course, um, right now, the best option, you could text give to 615-271-7370. Or you can go to godencounters.com and you will find um, a way to donate on there. But I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that that is an option if you feel led to so into James's ministry. Into our ministry. Our ministry. Okay, Rachel. It is not just me. I understand that though. Because God Encounters, by the way, guess what? This is your ministry because you can be a part through prayer. You can be a part through giving. You can be a part just by taking social media tools that we have like this and sharing it with others. The God Encounters Today podcast. Rachel, for a moment, why don't you tell the people about that? Yeah, we um, have a weekly podcast. We've been doing it for about a year and a half now, I think. And... We have covered so many topics. Right now we're closing out our dream uh, series, which has been incredible. We've had some amazing interviews on there. We've had, um, we've had a Hearing God uh, season and something that's very exciting. This guy has a new book coming out. We'll have a series later in the year that goes with that book. So it's just a, it's a great additional resource you can pop in when you're driving in your car or if you're like cleaning the dishes and, you know, put in your AirPods or something or whatever. But um, yeah, we have loved doing our God Encounters Today podcast, which is available on, you can find that on Spotify. You can find it on uh, Apple Music, podcasts or basically anywhere you would listen or find a podcast you can find it on there okay well awesome well so we just want to thank you and please you know if you if you're able to tell us where you're from what city state nation we love the nations by the way this is god encounters ministries a ministry to the nations mm -hmm. through our email list alone we have over 160 nations that receive our uh, e-newsletters and free videos and audios and things of that nature. So anyway, I just want to thank you for partnering with us by just watching this hilarious, sober, and hopeful. 
filled good news time on insights. Rachel, would you close for us? Yeah, just want to thank you guys for joining us. And please go ahead and type, maybe tag a friend in the comments if you want them to watch this video or you think, oh man, that word was for them. Go ahead and tag them in the comments, hit share. Um, we want to be able to re this to reach as many people that this would be an encouragement to them. So go ahead and do that. And also James was mentioning his social media. So if you want, if you want to, if you're following on Facebook, you're not following on Instagram, it's just at James Gall. Really simple, really easy, but um, we love you guys. And we are excited to be with you again next week. And hopefully we can figure out the live thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, God bless you. We'll see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday.